Good enough. conversation getting going here. I think we should at least give a little intro. Welcome to another edition of DGN Digest. We got special guest from Virtue Poker, Ryan, CEO, founder, uh, back with us again already. You can see he's dropping some good insider info. We're going to be diving deep into some uh, a tournament we got going that we're co sponsoring with Neo Tokyo News. It's getting down to one of the final tables. Of course, we have our regular hosts here, Shamsi and But Would Ya on we get, board. We got Phoenix down, all in, and takes it down. Oh. Whoa, Phoenix down is in the house oh, there. Go. How's he doing? He's doing pretty solid. Uh, I think he's sitting in the top 10 right now. Um, but the, the blinds are getting pretty high, so we're going to start seeing a lot of uh, all ins or, or folds, jammer folds going on. That's where you got to really uh, put your money where your mouth is on this one. <laughs> Ryan, what type of player are you? Are you more of a, you a bluffer? You slow play? You, uh, it seems to me you'd probably be like the methodical kind of, you know. You tease, you tease it up like you don't have anything, and all of a sudden this guy's the nuts. Yeah, that's, that's pretty like, spot on. I think, uh, honestly, <laughs> most, most tables that you sit down on um, start it. You want the table to think that you play tight. Um, because then they're going to always kind of put you on top hands. And then once you kind of have that persona uh, going on at the table, that's where you can start throwing in some bluffs until you finally get your hand caught in the cookie jar. And then the people at the table be, know, like, okay, this guy. Like, this ah, guy, this guy's been bullshitting me the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you come out too strong, then you're always, I feel like um, it. While people will think that you're unpredictable and you'll get a lot of big swings and getting people to call you off thinking you're always bluffing, um, yeah, you're playing with fire. Uh, and you don't really need to play that way, uh, especially later levels. Um, so, anyway. I think it'd be cool. I don't know if you've ever used, like, the... I play chess every now and then. The chess.com app um, has, like, really cool tutorials and, like, explanations and education on there. I don't know, man. There could be a good opportunity for a little VPP side educational chess.com route. It might be pretty sick. A hundred percent. Yeah, man, 100%. When, I, when I did this pivot uh, like 18 months ago, like the big ambitious goal is to, to create the, the chess.com for poker. Uh, so a lot of uh, the, the kind of basis for building the app this way where it was, you know, simple to use web app share link with friends was actually designed around uh chess.com even the the play now button um where you sit down and you play against bots to practice was supposed to be modeled off the uh the chess.com ux when you come in and you can sit down and play a game quickly with people with your skill level um we just haven't gotten around to actually we we actually have like these pretty solid poker bots that we've we've built that we can encode to let people play against bots at different skill levels but it's more of something that we we're going to come back to after we kind of establish the uh, user base through acquiring communities. I heard that. I think it'll be a great call uh, when you when you get some of those base communities over. It seems like people are thirsty over there. So, yeah, the 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 base community is a, is a big reason why we made the decision to to move um, uh, part of our token liquidity to to base. Is uh, when we when we published uh, the first tournament, we got six communities to play in that first tournament. The one that we're running on uh, Sunday, we're up to 13 communities that we're uh, token gating for. Like they, they have this tribalism that's like a good kind of tribalism where they all want to support each other. And, uh, and I feel like it's, I mean, we're seeing this week, like a lot of the base nfts are, are starting to go off some of them are the ones that are are playing in our in our tournament on sunday so yeah it's it, it'll be interesting to see if this is just another flash in the pan um type trend or if it's like something for longer to come yeah how sticky is it going to be over there um or are people just like oh this is where the hot thing is right now let's go talk to the hot girl at the party she's standing over on on base chain <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here I am. Uh, probably like give us a little bit more insight into that, but it seemed like it was uh, meme coins, the meme coins on Solana. Then now it's uh, people found the uh, NFTs on base. Um, who, who knows what's next? You got to If you don't already, man, you got to get a poker channel going on a uh, Farcaster on Warpcast because uh, 
I don't know. There was a channel called Hire and a channel called Ticker. Um, they both launched meme coins that, you know, had crazy, crazy attraction. So, you know, maybe we'll talk in the DMs over there. I'm I'm on there pretty often. I don't know poker as well as you, but I'm all about chit-chatting uh, on uh, social apps all day, I guess. You see me on Twitter, so. <laughs> um, sure. Shamsi, man, sorry. We've just been running away with it over here. We got Zihai. We got Bo Woodrow, We got Ryan. We got Shamsi. <laughs> Welcome to DJ and Digest. Um, what's going on, fam? How we living? All good, man. This is why we're here. You know, Ryan's one of us. So just as we uh, tend to go on uh, about topics that we like, so this, 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 that's the game. So we love to see it. Um, it's been a pretty interesting week, to be honest. Yesterday's Market Monday was pretty good. Uh, Z, what have you got going on your side apart from technical issues? Yeah, dealing with a little bit of technical issues, but uh, I'm going to be going into some uh, another another issue on the mental health front that relates to the markets and whatnot. So we'll get into that a little later. Uh, what about any TA? Do you got anything for us today, or or is that uh, how's that looking? Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. The bulk of the TA that we discuss every single week is for it's for a long term spot plays. So. Uh, I'm, I'm sure not a lot of traders are watching this anyway, so even if I give you trade ideas, copying me is not really going to help you. But regardless, let me just put my thoughts out there. So as we discussed with Ryan and everybody else on the call earlier, the KuCoin FUD uh, was pretty pretty strong. Um, having an exchange like that being hit with the type of charge that it is, is, is pretty dangerous to, to the space, especially around this time right before the halving. But Bitcoin doesn't really seem to care. You know, we're up about... 15, 13 percent in in the last three days. So um, there's that. But um, I'm very cautious. Like I said in yesterday's space, halvings in 30 days. I think there's going to be some fuckery up or down. And um, yeah, I'm just playing it safe from a trading side, from from an investment investment perspective. I've just been going ape and accumulating everything because you know the time horizon is nine to 12 months rather than four to five hours compared to when I'm trading. So in Bitcoin, you know, 70K is, is currently where we're at right now. I even tweeted uh, yesterday that 71K is euphoria and 52K is fear. Usually I like to sell euphoria and buy fear. So I'm in a short position right now. Uh, if this breaks up, I'll flip along and, uh, you know, we play the breakout trade. Otherwise, this is the classic mean reversion trade. I'm trying to trade this back to the mean, which I've really mapped out on the daily and the weekly longer term time frames. 60k being being the low that you want to be sweeping right here and uh, this cluster of candles below uh, just above 50k is is where you want to be targeting if you're on the short side if you're on the long side well there's no yeah sky's the limit um so that's that with bitcoin very similar on ethereum uh, i know a lot of, lot of people are going to say shamsi why are you bearish um i mean look i've i've made money on this short here i've made money on this short here i've made money on this short here i've made money on uh, you know, this long here. So I'm not bullish or bearish. I'm a trader. I'm trying to play both sides of, of the coin. So um, yeah, similar trade scenarios on Ethereum. Anything above, I would say 3,900 is very bullish. And then we aim for the highs and then higher. Um, and then if it reverses down here, there's more Ethereum for us to accumulate, hopefully lower gas fees. Uh, you know, I wouldn't hold my breath, but uh, a boy can dream. Um, just for all of the, all the bulls in the room, you know, if, if this was a chart that I showed you, let me just flip the Ethereum chart. And uh, we were in this area of support here. A lot of you would tell me to long this. So if I actually inverse the chart again, this is a clean short to me. And again, if I lose, I lose one R. If I win, I win 2.5 to 3 R. So, you know, just manage your, your risk to reward and you're going to be pretty good. Um, in terms of some of the tokens, a little update that we discussed from the last time. We had Beam. I said, you know, Beam is approaching an accumulation area that we should be looking at. I purchased some Beam, even tweeted about it. So if you guys picked up some Beam, you're up about 30, 35%. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then my baby Solana, my other baby Solana, my, my, you know, I've got two babies. One of them Solana, one of them is Brett. But um, yeah, Solana's looking pretty juicy. Doesn't really show any signs of slowing down. I think another breakout trade above 200 and uh, we're aiming for these local highs here in 220. So um, overall macro things look very bullish, but um, I, I just want to be very careful because uh, global events don't look the most amazing. I mean, uh, heart goes out to, to all, the, all the victims of the, the bridge collapse in, in Baltimore, I think, in the U.S., and uh, the dollar right now on the weekly is looking looking like it's accumulating, looking like it's pretty strong. So unless there's some there's a major break in the dollar below 100, 
uh, you kind of have to be very cautious from a macroeconomic perspective on on any huge bets that you take because this guy he tells you where the things go and you know when it came back down like this that's when bitcoin started rallying so i'm just keeping an eye on the dollar and uh aping where i need to ape and uh, that's pretty much it man nothing really has changed uh, i'm just playing it safe and uh, playing it the best way i can dude i think you're spot on there it's like don't don't overcomplicate it right like if it breaks this key area hey let it go down to somewhere to accumulate if we break to the upside he said local highs for Solana, but I mean, if it breaks this 200, you know, it's approaching all time highs. So let's go, baby. <laughs> yeah, man, that's the case for a lot of coins. I mean, you know, uh, you showed me Nosana the other day and I looked at the chart and looked looked pretty cool. And um, even Nosana looks like it's it's in a bit of an accumulation phase. I'll just show real quick on my screen just so that people that are interested can can look at the chart. I mean, I after you pointed the chart out, I picked up a little bit over here. So, um, I mean, we're... We're looking at coins that are in, in long accumulation phases. And even if they fall 10, 20, 30%, uh, the rise is is going to be monumental because, yes, this looks pretty big. But if I zoom out on the chart and uh, I do something like this, and usually in bull markets, this is usually what happens. Now you think that you're very early. So if you think that you're, if you're getting shaken out in these little times, it's my brother, you're not going to make it. So yeah, my rant is over. This video is sponsored by Virtue Poker, which is your all-in-one destination for creating poker games, organizing tournaments, and connecting with friends. There's customizable features and the ability to form your own poker club. So it's the ultimate platform for enhancing your skills and playing with your community or outside it. Visit virtue.poker to get started instantly. Talk of the town right now on uh, on Twitter is this Roost coin on Base Chain. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it at all, but they had a Twitter space earlier. They had, and you know, obviously these could be botted. Who who knows, right? But they had about uh, three thousand people live on the space. Um, they just recently launched, and the price is dipping right now. So I'm interested to see how how it goes. I mean, I really would like this presale meta to kind of be over. Like, you know, it's we had a couple that were amazing returns crazy and everyone it seems like is just kind of chasing that um so we'll see if we can kind of get away from that i'm hoping so but if you want to definitely check that out um i think there's a lot of opportunity on base like ryan just said you know he's going to be putting some of the vpp token over there for liquidity because the communities that have been forming over there and the people that are active over there have only been growing so i'm excited to see how that turns out and um just the market in general right i don't know if we're going to be going up i don't know if we're going to be going down but i think it's smart to you don't need to be all the way out of the market right now, at least in my opinion. All right, yeah. so go ahead, Ryan. No, I was going to say like the the the. I don't know if you've noticed this in other. Um, I guess we'll call it like L twos or other networks, but um, when one of these base communities tweets about some kind of update about their NFT or their project, they get all of these other projects to retweet and support and it's like they act as one i don't see that happening in ethereum i don't see that happening even on solana and i think there's like some power to uh having this kind of everyone support everyone mentality i don't know if that's necessarily what's driving a lot of the the activity um, but it definitely helps amplify even the smallest projects yeah, I'm seeing a lot yeah. of support from Optimism, to be honest. I, I didn't expect that, you know, L2 to L2, there's, yeah, there's competition, you could say, but uh, there's there's tiny little projects that, and NFT artists that are, you know, retweeting and they're commenting and they're engaging with stuff. So I think the the stuff that's developing is, is quite organic and very nice. And um, <laughs> once Coinbase... Point? Okay. Huh? Cut out. <laughs> uh, no, we yeah, cut out on our end for a second. And we were like, oh, another one's biting the dust. Yeah, it's gonna. Be yeah, man, I keep time. getting. I, they keep rugging me. <laughs> the Matrix is attacking me, man. Ugh. You got too much alpha, man. You gotta slow down. Uh, well, speaking of some of the L twos and the craziness happening, um, did you guys ever get over to Blast? Because Blast like really picked up with this uh, yield. Crypto Valley's kind of like a DeFi Kingdoms um, type play that was over there. I've seen a lot of influencers start talking about it. Uh, I actually didn't even know about it until Vidar. Uh, mentioned it around 40 million price ran up to well i say 40 million because you know meme corners look at uh market caps but 
So the price was around like uh, four dollars. Price ran all the way up to sixteen, and now it's pulling back to eight. So I'm just wondering, did you guys like participate in any of this? Like the Ponzi nomics are alive, and um, you know, I'm wondering if they're gonna keep growing. I'm still salty, man. I was I wasn't early on blast, so uh, I'm. It's like it's as if I'm not even trying. So I, I've just shifted all my focus on base, to be honest. What about you, Ryan? Yeah, it's kind of a similar narrative to to us. So I I um one of our more active uh, communities, uh, Decentral Games, which rebranded to Bagcoin. Um, so they they launched uh they they relaunched their token on Blast, and I guess by doing that they. Um, were able to accumulate gold that they can then dish out to um, their community who who plays um, and kind of like when I was doing the evaluation of where to to move uh, VPP, it was like, do you go to try to farm some kind of future airdrop or do you go to like say like a better branded, not better branded, but higher branding type L2? Um, and I feel like I kind of missed the boat. Um, and there's still the jury's still out on the, the L2 flavor of the week type model that we've seen this year. Um, however, the kind of argument about native yield is compelling. Um, it's just hopefully going to not turn into one of those, um, I don't know, Gemini urn type style stories in the future. Yeah, we can we can hope. I mean, I think you guys are pretty spot on saying that um, base is uh, to me base seems like the winner right now. And honestly, I pulled up some uh, some inflows, and if you look, I mean, the daily volume for base has just been absolutely going crazy over the last week. Um, up only, I think it reached over almost a billion dollars in total. Um, bridged over to base in the past week or so, so. That's pretty interesting. I know that the, the traction is over there. The protocols are over there. And you, when you're speaking about like L2 is rewarding people for trying them. So base obviously doesn't have its own native token, but there's this token DGEN. I'm sure you guys have heard about it somehow at this point. Um, and basically on that, I, I'm, it's not a Farcaster shill, but, but I mean, that's where like the base, base information is going down. Um, on Farcaster, a lot of people have been able to tip uh, others in DGEN coin. So we see a crazy run up on that. Um, I think it just crossed like over $300 million uh, for their fully diluted valuation. So it's absolutely insane, right? The, the mean coin mania is still alive. It's still kicking. Um, the gamblers are still gambling. So, you know, if you're not using one of these chains, you probably should. And if you want to gamble in a more traditional way, check out VPP. That's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Speaking of, what's... Uh... What's happening on your side? Sorry, we can we can discuss this tweet first. Yeah, yeah. So the other thing that I just kind of caught um, earlier today, like what was it? it was like a little over an hour ago, is that you know Coinbase is going to start moving more of their actual uh, customer funds onto onto Base, and I feel like that's more symbolic than um, than anything. I think they're trying to essentially say to businesses like it's okay for a publicly if it's okay for a publicly traded company like us to store uh funds on our base chain then you can too and i feel like that kind of goes back to what we were talking about on i think it was nft market monday last week or this week where like bridging is not cool you want to abstract out bridging one way to do that is to come directly from the exchange onto the network that you want to use those funds for and if coinbase continually makes this big push even like the the separation between base and and coinbase seems to be getting smaller and smaller um you're gonna have like a lot of easily accessible liquidity and retail liquidity that can start coming on and, and interacting um uh with these different applications um and obviously mean coins and nfts on on base yeah, and you know, there's there's an aspect of that that we don't really discuss. I, I always make the comparison these days to Binance and Binance Smart Chain. And uh, Binance Smart Chain's backbone was BNB. And, uh, uh, <laughs> but would you, you remember me saying that for the 700th time? <laughs> but, oh, um, yeah, yeah, man, totally. Every transaction on on Coinbase is, is eventually going to have an option for your fees and your you know, all the residuals to be charged in in uh, whatever base token it is. So I think um, that's going to add even more 
activity and liquidity in there. Yeah, man, damn South Africa, uh, rug pulling me. You know, I, sh I should just be a viewer on this show. Uh, unlike say hi, <laughs> man, this guy's having a day and a half. Uh, what's up, G? Uh, hey, <laughs> all, all of our, you know, please, please like, share, subscribe, and go into the comments and just pray for ZI. Like, you guys don't know, but he... He's going through it, man. He's going through the ringer right now, not only with these technical difficulties, but some IRL people are causing him some drama. So, you know, go into the comments. Let's give a let's give a prayer sign for Zihai. We love you, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Appreciate it. It's been it's been a technical difficulty day as long as like what you're saying. Uh, some some wild stuff going on I'm trying to deal with. But uh, appreciate the hearts, man. Appreciate you guys being on here, having patience. So far, it looks like, uh, you know, everything's connected again here. See how long it lasts. All right, you're back. You're back. Um, dude, Chomsky is doing some wizardry over there. Uh, Bro, uh, the know. last <laughs> thing I was going to say, the last thing I was going to say about base um, is just that, like, Jesse Pollock has been doing a great job, like, pushing everything forward. Uh, they've been, you know, obviously a huge, huge base contributor um, and just getting people over there and getting them active. So if you guys don't know, that's a great account to follow. Um I would definitely check them out. Um, yeah, man. Where are we at uh, on the tournament? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I I didn't want to interrupt during the uh, the TA segment, but, uh, you know, luckily we have a hand replayer here, so we can uh, we can see uh, what happened to our, our good friend uh, Phoenix Down, uh, unfortunately, on this hand. So. Oh, PD. Oh, no. Yeah. All right, so... We Talk got, us through what's, what's we happening. Fold. We got a fold. We got an all in and all in. All here. And let's just say before we show the reveal, it was a pretty loose call for Phoenix down for all his chips, considering there were nine players left and the next player eliminated would send the rest of the people to the final table. Uh, and he came through with a, a queen seven offsuit. Uh, which obviously would lose in here to pocket tens. So uh, maybe maybe next time it was a good run. Next time you'll actually be able to go ahead and make the final table. Um, and then I think for for the remaining players here we got uh, six left. Um, so if we look at the prizes here, everyone here is in the money, and we're starting to get to the the larger cash prizes on top of the uh, thousand BPP. So. Uh, we'll stay tuned here and see uh, who, who ends up coming through. Uh, looks like we have one uh, citizen left uh, who is sitting so, uh, with a middling stack outside of the big stack here. It looks like it's a, it's anyone's game, so we, we shall see. Not too bad. I mean, 120, 150 participants getting down to the final nine. Shout out to you, Phoenix Dow, representing over there. Yeah, man, Petey gets his um, ass kicked, though. He gets in the final stages and then he he does what PD does all the time. <laughs> fumbles, yeah, fumbles the bag. I guess again. I would, one other thing I'll call out but that it's actually kind of cool that I just noticed is you know one, one thing that we've kind of noticed is um, every time we partner with a, a community, uh, inevitably what happens is their community doesn't run as many events as our club. So we get a ton of people from different communities who come and all join the Virtue Club. So we got, it looks like we got a little pudgy here. Not quite sure what that NFT is. And then obviously a citizen. So um, one of the things that uh, I'd say, well, probably is changing is originally I wanted, you know, I wanted Virtue to be just one of many clubs on the app and it'll still be like that. However, I'm going to put, we're putting a bit more effort into, um, let's call it like the true B2C component of virtue um, by ramping things up, um, which is going to kind of feed into the the upgraded VPP utility. Um, we got like 1,100 people in our club. Um, so uh, it makes sense to, to to pretty much do some, some dedicated promos for them um, beyond just our weekly events here. Yeah, and how are you finding... How are you keeping up with the increasing interest week by week? Because I'm seeing a lot more people chatting about VPP, a lot more people participating. How are you keeping up with, uh, you know, all the new users? Yeah, so uh, I, I scaled our, uh, our support staff. So we have a 24-7 support staff that's able to monitor the, the Telegram, Discord, and provides, you know, daily updates and summaries to me for kind of any kind of urgent um, events. Um, I'd say on the outreach side and the like the inbound um 
there's definitely a lot more that we could do to optimize like the onboarding flow right now. I've, I've become pretty much a, a, a bottleneck for that. So one of the aims right now is to um, get this revamped VPP utility. Uh, we're also upgrading our UI for the app and getting a few bugs fixed. Um, and then once we kind of get through that phase, which, you know, it's all of a few weeks, um, kind of putting the, the pedal back to the metal for um, scaling and onboarding uh, new communities. Like the inbounds are there. It's just a matter of making sure that when we do onboard these communities, they have a positive first experience and also trying to reduce the manual effort from me to get these communities onboarded and using the software um, the best way it can be. Yeah, man, I'm assuming ideally you want to be in a position where you're just making decisions and not actually yep. doing Yeah, no, and, and I've I'm, I'm been working with uh, Ben uh, Ben Gothard, and uh, yeah, he's been drilling into me uh, automation, automation, uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite as, uh, as, as good at that as him, but we're going to be working on trying to figure out some automated tools for a new community to be able to quickly get things set up. Ooh, I, I'm feeling for you because, uh, one thing that guy does is he doesn't stop. So <laughs> I'm sure that automation will be coming soon because, uh, he, he is not one to be slacking. Z high, man, we haven't, you know, you've been in, you've been out, you know, you've been having a bad day, you've been having a good day. Like break us down a little bit of pe and before you leave us again you know we got any words from the gong master himself like anything from your side all right yeah well you know this is how it goes here living in paradise you know sometimes you you're you're in and out in the in the uh the interwebs hopefully elon musk can improve his, his starlink man so those of us out in the boonies can can be involved in these great conversations you know as for the whole uh you know, mental health side of things. We've been looking at some stuff. One thing I wanted to touch on, if I can uh, stay connected here, is having a sense of purpose, you know, having a sense of purpose and direction. Uh, I know that's something probably you got, uh, you know, with, with your project, Ryan, you know, you're building, you're, you have something that you're aiming for, you have goals, you know, and that gives you some resilience. When we have that in our lives, we have resilience to make it through and, and overcome things that might cause more stress or anxiety or times of depression. Um, so, I mean, that's that's something that's really important in life in, in general. I think that's why we see so often when people like reti retire from their work, they lose that sense of purpose and their their well-being can drop pretty fast. And just trying to relate that to our, our crypto scene um, and the market I think that's probably why, number one, I, I've enjoyed being in Neo Tokyo because there's such a focus on building and on, on creating and, and making stuff happen and, and building projects and making the space better. That's definitely something of that uh, is a reason why I've been so involved in Neo Tokyo. And then um, it's also probably why I prefer to get involved in projects that I actually believe in or that are providing some kind of service that is of need you know there's something to be said for all this meme coin action but in general it's like you know if if your purpose and focus in life is just to make money it's usually pretty hard to ever get that sense of resilience get that sense of satisfaction right we need some kind of other purpose where we're, we're, we're trying to accomplish something we're trying to learn something I don't know about uh, the car there that Chompsy has. He wants to he wants to get some cars, I guess. <clears throat> but um, yeah, so uh, that that's one sense of it. Um, I've definitely while while you guys have been in the meme coins, there's a lot of things in the in the market right now with real world assets, with Deepin, even AI. I mean, a lot of these projects have things that that could revolutionize different aspects of society or at least contribute in some way. You know, I even like looking for these these. Uh, these startup ones and these micro caps, you know, I was looking at this one Atlas Navi that I jumped into, which was, uh, you know, it's already got uh, apps on the app store. It's, it's integrated into CarPlay and, you know, you can have it set up in your car where it's actually tracking and it's providing data so they can have like a navigation app similar to like Google Maps and whatnot. Super small micro cap, but this has got like big connections already and it has an opportunity to um you know provide some i definitely think that meme coins are kind of like the the middle finger to the you know 
the the everyone, right? Uh, like, oh, we don't like you, Elizabeth Warren, so we're gonna make a token called, you know, whatever it may be. Um, <laughs> Joe Joe Biden, you're you're annoying, so we're gonna make a meme coin called whatever it may be. So yeah, I definitely think there is that rebellious act. It seems like uh, that really sparked a cultural movement, right? The whole GameStop thing of 2021. I mean, there was a meme coin called GameStop that came out and went to 100 million. Uh, fully diluted mark cap, which is, you know, insane when we're really thinking about some of these actual <laughs> real world <laughs> projects. Um, shout out to Pith. That is one uh, one project that I think is kind of undervalued that has like it's doing great partnerships. All the decentralized infrastructure has been using Pith, um, not over Chainlink. I think Ch- Chainlink is probably a superior product, but Pith Network is pretty good in my opinion. So glad we got that. Uh, all right. See you later, Zihai. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you guys had any comments or, or anything there. Yeah, I mean, you know, just some kind of thoughts on on what he said. First off, on the kind of the resilience topic, um, you know, we we operate in this extremely volatile uh, industry um, where if you only attach yourself to the one goal of making money, um, Bull runs are short, bear markets are long. Even during the bulls, we experience 30, 40, 50% drawbacks. So if you're only attaching yourself to that one thing, um, it's easy to kind of get yourself down in the dumps quite frequently. So, you know, obviously with Virtue, having that North Star um, is is super helpful. Obviously, it sucks when our coin is down and when the market is down and things like that. But that kind of vision and goal of what you're trying to build definitely helps. And then on on the topic of um, meme coins and its value to to the ecosystem, I think like in general, if you take a step back of like where this industry was was born from, it came from the desire to build an alternative financial system after the 08 crash. Um, and when we thought the entire global financial system was, was going to go under, and that was actually where, you know, Bitcoin was born. And I think to a large degree, each cycle, um, that goal gets closer and closer as you have more people who have self-custody wallets, more people who are transacting using cryptocurrency, more people who are moving funds, operating essentially their own personal bank accounts on chain. Um, and I think that the big driver of what meme coins um, and a lot of these, um, I don't know, pump and dump cycles, whether it be meme coins or NFTs does, is it just gets more people, more wallets into the ecosystem, which ultimately, even if the coin does end up dumping, people might have a bad taste in their mouth, but they still have that MetaMask wallet or they still have that uh, wallet that they can always come back to. So I think there's value in um, getting attention and getting users um, into the ecosystem, independent of the means of which they come in through. I yeah, think that was said. Like, really good, really well said, because it's like, I don't care how you get here, just get here, right? Like, I don't care how you start using crypto, just start using it, um, you know? So I think that was great. Sorry, Sam, Shamsi. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, that that's the thing about memes. It's such a low barrier to entry, and it just, it's its the shiny thing. It gets people in because it's its fun, and people, you know, even with money, they want to gabble. They want to, you know, they, they want to play games. They want to put wagers on things. They want to have fun. So it's a pretty cool um, way for people to enter the market, and I also feel like crypto was this rebellious movement in finance where you're trying to get away from traditional finance. Once you're inside crypto, you have a subculture of rebellion, which is trying to get away from your mature and your heavy market cap projects, which is, you know, I feel like I'm rugging right now. Uh, am I rugging? Oh, you're back. Once you're in crypto, you start to go into crypto. <laughs> yeah, once you get into crypto, you have subculture where you have more rebellion, which is now meme coins compared to your bigger coins. So, you know, I feel like this, uh, this is a cycle of people trying to find more rebellious things that are fun and just away from the status quo are going to happen. And I think that's a natural progression of things. People uh, look into crypto and uh, the rebellious thing right now is meme coins. So so that's the way. And from an adoption perspective, it's been amazing. So um, yeah, that, that that's always going to be there. But um, like Z said earlier, uh, to double tap on that, you got to find your purpose. I mean, for me as a trader, staring at charts 24-7 is pretty tough. I'll, I'll be honest. It's probably one of the most boring jobs that you can have uh, because I'll put a trade on, I'll check it every hour, every two hours, and I'll do nothing. 
sometimes. So I have to keep myself busy with research, keep myself busy with other business ventures and, you know, accumulating capital so that one day I can uh, maybe open my own swap or open an exchange or, you know, start a project like Ryan has. So, um, yeah, the long-term vision always is there. So like Z said, don't surround yourself with only trying to make money. feel like I'm rugging again, but uh, that's that. I'm done rambling now. Oh, and Z eyes gone. Oh. <laughs> it's a game of musical chairs right now. I know, oh, dude, yeah. like, you guys couldn't agree more with, with those takes. And um, I also think that um, one of the other benefits um, to these cycles, whether or not people end up getting rugged or whatnot um, once they're here, is they also learn a bit of patience. Um, you can always tell when someone's relatively new to the space, they're always chasing the next shiny thing, and that's the only thing that they do. Um, and it's kind of, it's like, you know, uh, getting drunk off tequila your first time and puking the next morning. It's good to get that out of your system early on so that you can kind of come back through the next cycle as a more educated and, and, and aware person. Um, so I think that short term mentality of three week, three day, three month trades, um, not to throw shade on you, Sean, see, I'm sure you're very good at what you do. It doesn't really help projects establish themselves as businesses or protocols or stuff help establish themselves. So I think it's okay to do some some trading um, or come in as a trader, um, but you stay for for the projects or you stay for something that you actually use day in and day out. Um, yeah, like conviction is the name of the game. Sure. You got to be in it. Yeah, hundred percent. And like, I feel like the asymmetrical edge that you can have on information, like in the crypto markets, especially like, you know, like joining VPP's discord or telegram, or just finding like people on Twitter that have been talking about it. You can get like not insider information, but just information that may not be readily available to someone that wrote like a medium article or some like random person on decrypt that just happened to write about this project. It's like, okay, like, well, I can go talk to the founder or the CEO, or I can come on DGen Digest, or I can hop in the comments, or I can get on a Twitter space. Um, I think that there's so much value in that, that people kind of let fall to the wayside. And it's like, if you really just take the time to kind of double click, yeah, you might be a trader, you might be in and out of some things, but like, when you can build that conviction, you can build a position. And then nothing is better than being able to build a nice position to a project that you actually have conviction in and riding it, whether that's one year, two years, 10 years, um, you know, hopefully it'll take you to Valhalla, but I know we covered a lot here, fellas. Uh, I don't know if we had anything else we wanted to uh, to touch on. Did we want to check on the tournament? Do we have a winner already? Uh, oh, yeah, we're actually all in right now. Uh, this is, oh, I clicked the wrong button. <laughs> Pressure's and on. And it's over. Oh, great. Okay, we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, we had a good we thing we can share. replay. <laughs> that is a cool little feature there, uh, the replay yeah. and feature. Oh man, I don't know. It might close once. Uh, oh no! Uh, All right. Well, let's sh let's shout out the winner. Who was it? Not coin. It looked like. Um, yeah, I think we got not coin here as the winner. Uh, wow. So he came back and beat that big stack. Big stack had yeah, like four hundred k. So. Yeah, and he takes down one hundred fifty bucks plus a uh, thousand VPP. So. Uh, Ooh. Should be should yeah we're doing we're doing some more tournaments and and in fact um, one thing that we're I'm working on um, with John does is uh, spicing up the bets for bites club um, the the road to the main event promo that we did with the pudgy penguins has been a, a pretty big hit and has gotten a lot of good engagement and I think uh, the timing right now with the the main event coming up um in july kind of lends itself to being able to try to do something similar um with with some citizens inside the, the neo tokyo club um as much as i love uh dishing out vpp as prizes um i think uh, a main event seat uh, would be a pretty uh pretty attractive thing to to try to get some more some more engagement and and for us getting more engaged people inside these clubs helps us long term because Similar to creating wallets and getting into crypto, once you have an account and you're inside a club, uh, you're more likely to start playing when when we start doing events. So um, we're gonna have to get a uh, like a Phil Hellmuth or a uh, money maker, you know, to join one of the tournaments. I feel like that might be a big hit. Hey, you want to take out one of the top dogs? Phil Ivy's actually playing in the next VPP tournament. <laughs> yeah, we. You can tell how dated I am because like that's like when I used to actually watch poker in like 2012. All those guys. 
Yeah, I know. And we, 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 uh, we had Phil Ivey for five years uh, as like the face of, of Virtue. Um, oh, was, hell uh, yeah. Yeah, you, you Google Phil Ivey Virtue Poker and he was the, the face of our app. We had him like on the, the login page um, uh, pretty much until we, we closed the, the old app at the end of 2022. But yeah, it's uh, we still have a lot of strong relationships with pros in the space. Um, we came in pretty hot with him, Brian Rass and Dan Coleman back in the day. So um, one of the things that we're, we're looking to do is uh, as we kind of get closer to the series is um, start to having some more integration where you're playing online to get entries into to live events. So um, we'll, we'll stay tuned on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, then the, the last kind of thing that I didn't, really get to touch on too much but is like coming down the pike is uh, we obviously don't plan on only giving away bpp um for as prize money and inside um both our events and our partner events so what we're we're working on publishing is the upgraded uh tokenomics and, and bpp utility um and there are kind of a couple of key facets to that that we've been kind of doing uh in an iterative approach so the first was um, launching chips inside our club. Um, and the core idea behind that is right now you hold in a certain amount of VPP, then we allow you to enter a tournament. So you can buy 5,000 VPP, enter this event, then you could totally sell it right after the event's done, right? Um, what we're going to do is introduce a stake to play mechanism so that when you stake vpp we lock it up and in return you get chips that correspond to the amount of tokens that you've staked and then all of the games will be done in chips and essentially the more chips you have the more abilities you'll have to, to enter more events and um, if you unstake your tokens then we reset your chip balance to zero so pretty much as long as you're active in the club and as you, especially as you build up a chip stack your incentive to uh, unstake your tokens goes down and when you unstake it's kind of unconventional but will burn a percent of your original stake so your reward is the prize money that you can earn it's not going to be a net uh it's not going to create a surplus and a adding of liquidity i'm uh, sorry adding a supply it's going to be more of a burning mechanism uh, so that's piece a um and then the second piece uh which will be super interesting which kind of touches back on our original topic was this idea of custody uh, and how crypto and uh, poker are similar. So uh, I've, through a good amount of research, believes that we can take a similar approach to the Uniswap model, um, which is integrating contracts um, into the application so that your smart contract of your token, let's say you deposit 50 USDC, uh, corresponds to a chip balance in the club. Um, so effectively we could enable any ERC 20 token on any EBM chain to have it pairing with chips inside a club. So those are the two big updates that are, are coming out for us. Um, so, uh, we're kind of moving out of this beta phase, um, the near term show over. <laughs> <laughs> It's welcomed, man. We need to learn more about these projects that are actually building in the space. I mean, we have so many kind of fly-by-night things that come by. The attention goes to them just to find out, um, oh, it was a rug, or oh, they weren't actually building what they say they were building. Or So, you know, always happy to have legit projects, um, you know, sponsoring and being a part of the show. I mean, I don't know if you guys seen, this is kind of some breaking news, but Munchables, um, which is like on-chain companions, was just hacked for 18,000 ETH. So, I mean, 18,000 ETH being drained out of the ecosystem as we speak. Um, uh, obviously, you guys will probably see million this tomorrow. Dollars. So, yeah, I didn't have the time to do the calculations. But, yeah, man. So, you know, there's – we couldn't be happier to be with legit builders in the space that are trying to keep things afloat. Obviously, no shade to Munchables. I'm, you know, I don't think they meant to get drained. But, you know, that's – when you're dealing with the blockchain, it is what it is. So, Damn. that's nuts, man. Yeah, I just saw yeah. Zach XPT tweeting about her also. $62.5 million. That is insane. That is a lot. Yeah. If, you, if you're one yeah, of them, uh, you know, sorry to hear, you might want to. And I mean, like, it's like one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> he had to bow out. He's like, all right, my munchable bag is now zero. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, all right, man. Well, purpose is nil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shamsi, did you have any other updates? I mean, uh, Ryan just gave us the great breakdown of VPP. Make sure you guys are checking out what's to come there. But Shamsi, anything else from your side? Just wanted to give uh, one of my guys a quick shout out, um, Crypto Tots. You know, he he does these uh, these these tweets called 24 Hours on Base. If you really want to be tapped in on Base, you want to look at Base NFTs, swaps, projects, you know, TVL information. I'm not going to get into the tweet, but um, it is very, very high quality information. So I would really advise you do that and just play around. I've been playing around on a lot of platforms, you know, since Swap. There's, um, <laughs> am I rugging again? There's there's custom punks where you can create your own punk. Yeah, Tots uh, is uh, awesome. He used to do a lot of work for us on the on the NT News team as well. So definitely shout out to Crypto Tots. Oh, sorry, you cut out there. What is this, uh, Costco punks? Yeah, this, this, is, this is called custom punks where you can make your own punk to identify yourself on base chain. You can design your own thing and you can mint it for like 140 40 bucks. Um, there's, you know, other artists. This one's like, uh, this artist called JVMI. Pretty cool art. You can customize it. And you can mint your own NFT. It's pretty nice. So base um, thing with yeah, man. The, uh, pushing the boundaries. Yeah, yeah. So it's pretty cool stuff. I would I would go follow Tots and um, keep up with what's happening on base. Uh, that's all from my side. And Zha, man, you're back with us. Any final words? I just want to hit these damn gongs, man, and make this nightmare end of the uh, technical <laughs> difficulty madness. Really appreciate Ryan coming on. Sorry I couldn't have been here to listen to it all. Uh, I was in and out, definitely heard most of it. I'll listen to it on the replay, but always a pleasure. And uh, we'll be back again soon. Next week, Market Monday, DJ and Digest as usual. What do you think? I think it's time to gong us out, man. Take us home. Take us home. Appreciate everybody listening yes, in. Sir. We'll be back as we always do. We got Shamsi, we got Ryan from Virtue Poker, I'm Bo Woodja, and shout out to Zihai, who uh, I think is muted and we can't hear the gongs, which is, just makes this so perfect. It makes this episode so perfect. Even 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 through the difficulties, we're still rocking, so there it is. There's a little bit of man. <laughs> Until next time, guys, we'll see you later. Peace out, fam. <laughs>